right, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so nice to be here with you all this morning. Good morning to all our schools across the Catholic Jewish School Board of Eastern Ontario. And we're very happy to welcome you um, to Breakfast with God. And, we have uh, lots of friends with us here today, too, haven't we, Father John? Well, yes. And uh, to watch your step around here this morning. Yes, we do. We've got uh, many lambs here. And do you know what Jesus' favorite animal was? No, I don't. I think it was the lamb. It was? I think it was. So, you know, this is, uh, this is quite a coincidence here because uh, Jesus loved the lamb. And here we've got so many lambs here. We have, there Just was for quite you. a mess in here this morning when we first arrived, but we've got it all tidied up oh, now. Oh, yeah. So we're good. And they're all very happy here and they're, they're listening too. And I think lambs can sing, but anyway, we'll find out. I hope they can. I hope you can sing with us this morning too. That would be great. And uh, what we're going to do is start with our song. And our opening song is one that you all know and I think that you all love, which is Johnny Appleseed. So please don't be shy. Please sing with us the great song, Johnny Appleseed. Oh, the Lord is good to me. And so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the appleseed. The Lord is good to me. Oh, in every seed I sow, Bad, Father John. That was not bad. Um, I think the lambs enjoyed it. I think the lambs enjoyed it too. I think. Well, oh yes, they're buying away here. Oh good. We can't really pick them up on the microphones, which might be a good idea. I could That's hear them singing just a little bit. Yeah. I could hear you. I, I could hear you singing too. Thank you for singing. So, Father John, we have a special message today. Of course, we are in this season of Lent in our church right now, and Lent is a very special time as we prepare ourselves for Easter. And it's a time when we really think about um, some things that we maybe could have done better throughout the year, right, Father, as we, we prepare, um, as we prepare ourselves for Easter. And so today, our message today is going to be about the theme of forgiveness. Forgiveness. So what can you tell us about forgiveness, Father? Well, if we look at their, today's message there, I love those pictures. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the children are forgiving one another by holding up a sign that says, sorry. And sometimes forgiveness can just be as simple as that. Saying to someone that maybe we've hurt or hurt their feelings just to say, you know what, I'm sorry. And that's really, I think, what forgiveness is all about. It's about letting go and forgiving and trying to restore the friendship that we may have been challenged by our words or something that we may have done. I think too, Father, when we say we're sorry, it's important for us to remember that we have to try not to do those things again, right? We sort of, we say we're sorry and we're also with that word, making a, a promise to our friends or making a promise to God that we're gonna try to do better from here on. I think that's a part of it. It too. is very important. So we learn from our mistakes. And because we're human beings, of course, we make mistakes from time to time. And that's why God gave us the ability to forgive and the ability to say, I'm sorry, so that we can move past our mistakes and restore friendships. So today we're going to hear a story that Jesus told about a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. That's quite a few. Well, we almost got a hundred here. Nearly a hundred. Well, it's as high as I can count. That's pretty high. It's true. And one of them wandered away. When the shepherd finds it, he doesn't get mad at the sheep. No, he gets, he feels thanks and th he feels thankful that the sheep is found. And Jesus tells this story to show us how God loves us. God doesn't get mad at us. God wants us to return and to be friends with him. God is always looking for us and ready to welcome us back.
So we're going to read a gospel now, and this is a special gospel about the lost sheep, and this is it told by Jesus. Father, can I interrupt you for one second? Sure. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting, Father. It's just that usually before we before we read from the gospel, we usually have our special song that leads into the gospel, but we're not doing that this morning, are we? We always do the Alleluia, but this is a, a special time of year called Lent. And so what happens during Lent and the Alleluia? Well, we don't say the Alleluia during Lent, do we? Because the no. Alleluia is kind of a word that is a, it's a word of celebration. It's a word of, um, uh, it's kind of like a party word. And Lent isn't a time of celebration. It's a time of contemplation, which means it's a time of really sort of thinking about more serious things and a little less celebrating. So I guess that's why we don't say, sing the alleluia before but when will we sing it again Kate? oh we are going to sing it again father on easter sunday easter sunday the alleluia all comes rushing after. back in during the easter season and then yeah during all the all the um sundays after that or every time we proclaim the gospel during the easter season yeah. and in ordinary time but not during the season of lent you know really because we sing the alleluia at easter it makes it even more special that's right so I think that's why we're going to do that. So we're not going to have an Alleluia today, but the next Breakfast with God, we will have our Alleluia back. It's going to because, be bigger than ever. Yeah, and we'll sing Alleluia for sure. So this is called the Parable of the Lost Sheep, and it's from the Gospel of Matthew. And so let's make three crosses when we hear the Gospel just to bless ourselves. Bless my mind, bless my lips, and bless my, my heart. Jesus said, take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For in heaven, their angels are continue, continually see the face of my father. So what do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 in the mountains and go and search for the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. So it is not the will of your father in heaven that even one of these little ones should ever be lost. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Wow, that was a really great story. Well, it was, and... I was worried about that little sheep that got lost. Yes, I was too. And, you know, sometimes um, sheep gets get lost, as we just heard, because they go away from their brothers and sisters in the flock. Maybe they go their own way. And that's the shepherd's job, you know. The shepherd's job is to go out and make sure all the sheep are together and kept safe. And so that's why the shepherd went out to look after those, uh, to find that one sheep that was lost and to bring that sheep back into the fold. And you know, Kate, sometimes people can be like sheep mm. because they sometimes can get lost. And sometimes even children, they can feel lost. They can feel that they're not included, they, that they're outside and uh, that maybe they don't feel in, uh, that they're part of things or that they belong. And so you mean children can get lost, not just like if you got, say, separated from a parent or something, or, you know, in a, in a store or something like that, but you mean people can feel lost, like just by feeling alone, feeling mm -hmm. like they don't have a bunch of friends or they don't really connect with a, with a big Like that people. lamb over there. There is a little lamb over here. I can see his little the butterfly here, but you know what, Father, I feel kind of bad for that lamb. I feel like maybe I should bring that lamb back think, to the flock. I think you should too. What do you think? Put that lamb there. I think that lamb wants to go to be with the uh, other sheep. I think he does too. Let's put him right here with the little buddy. Mm -hmm. the little lamb buddy and that butterfly. We'll look after them too. We'll look after both of them. That's right. There we go. There we go. I feel so much better. I think the sheep does too. I think he does too. He looks happier. So, you know, everyone from time to time feels like the lamb that's a bit lost. And that's the time when we reach out to God, who is the good shepherd. And we ask God 
help me and bring me back so that I feel like I belong again. And we can, this can happen too when we say something that we shouldn't, or maybe somebody says something to us that they shouldn't. And then we feel like we don't like them anymore. But that's what forgiveness is all about, bringing us back together, asking God to heal any injurious, injurious things that we've said or have said to us so that we feel like we belong again and that our friendships are made better again. And that's really the message of this gospel, that God will go after us and um, bring us back and make us feel again that we belong and that we're part of our friendships once again. So when we say our when we say that we're sorry, when we say when we ask for forgiveness, that's what God is uh, committed to doing for us to help us to be that special person who says I'm sorry and ask for forgiveness. And that leads us into, I think, well, it an leads us story. so well into the story. I had no idea because you know what I really liked about the gospel message, Father, is that um, when the shepherd went out and found that lamb who had wandered off, that lamb who had who had gone away, the shepherd didn't get mad at the lamb. No. He just was really happy to have found him, right? He wasn't angry with that little lamb. He was just really happy to have found him. You know why? Why? The shepherd loved that lamb. That's why. Oh, you don't get mad at people you love. Okay, so uh, I'm looking at all of these sheep here, and it reminds me of when I was when I was a kid. I didn't have sheep, but I did have. We did have goats. We had a few goats. I oh, lived on a, yeah on a little farm, just a little what, what we call a hobby farm, and we had some goats. And in fact, my first pet as a little girl was a goat named Cleopatra. She was beautiful. Oh. And um, one day Cleopatra, I had her tied out on the lawn because goats are kind of like living lawnmowers. So if you put them out on the lawn, they'll eat all the grass that's around like on a, on a rope, right? So they kind of eat all the grass around where they can reach. And then you just pick up the stick and you move it and you put it back in the grass again. And then they'll eat all the grass around that little area too. So I had Cleopatra out cutting the lawn for me. And she must have nibbled through her rope because I looked out the window and she was gone. And I was so worried about her. I was so scared and I was so sad. Anyway, I went, rode my bike up and down the road to all the neighbors' places looking for Cleopatra and I found her. She was in a field. I found she was looking. There were probably daisies or some flowers like these ones in that field. And Cleopatra was just curious and she went looking for them. But I was so happy to get her back and I wasn't angry with her. I was just really happy that she came back. And that reminds me of, of um, another story that I know. So the gospel story and my story about Cleopatra remind me of another story I know called The Runaway... Can you guess, Father? Uh, rabbit? Well, oh. you're close. Okay. The Runaway Bunny. Bunny. So I'm going to read that story today. The Runaway Bunny. <clears throat> and this is by an author called Margaret Wise Brown. And the pictures are by an artist called Clement Hurd. And this book's birthday is 1942. That's a long time ago. This Certainly. book is 80 years old. So it must be a good story because people have loved it for a long time. <clears throat> Here we go, The Runaway Bunny. Once there was a little bunny who wanted to run away so he said to his mother, I am running away. If you run away, said his mother, I will run after you, for you are my little bunny. If you run after me, said the little bunny, I will become a fish in a trout stream, and I will swim away from you. If you become a fish in a trout stream, said his mother, I will become a fisherman, and I will fish for you. And there's a picture of the mummy bunny fishing for the little bunny. Look what she's using for bait, father. That's a carrot. That's pretty good bait for a carrot fish, yeah, isn't it? it? Or for a bunny fish. I'll bet it will work. It really works. If you become a fisherman, said the little bunny, I will become a rock on the mountain high above you. 
And if you become a rock on the mountain high above me, said his mother, I will be a mountain climber and I will climb to where you are. And there's the mummy bunny dressed as a mountain climber. I like the hat. It's a good hat. It'll mm -hmm. keep the sun off her face. Mm -hmm. Her ears don't look very protected. I hope she's got sunscreen on her ears. If you become a mountain climber, said the little bunny, I will be a crocus hidden in a garden. If you become a crocus hidden in a garden, said his mother, I will be a gardener and I will find you. Oh, oh. can you find the little bunny in that garden? Hmm. He's hidden in a crocus. Crocus kind of looks like a short tulip. Oh, I think I see the bunny. Can you see him, Father? No. Well, I can lend you the book later on if you want to keep looking for him. Oh. Do you see him? He's no, no, I don't. Oh, no, you don't. He disappeared oh, again. Wow. If you are a gardener and you find me, said the little bunny, I will be a bird and fly away from you. This little bunny is very adventurous. If you become a bird and fly away from me, said his mother, I will be a tree that you can come home to. Wow, that's quite a picture. That is quite a picture. That is quite a tree. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could trim a hedge to look like that tree. And a flying bunny. And a flying bunny. They're big wings for a little bunny. If you become a tree, said the little bunny, I will become a little sailboat and I will sail away from you. If you become a sailboat and sail away from me, said his mother, I will become the wind and blow you where I want you to go. If you become the wind and blow me, said the little bunny, I will join a circus and fly away on a flying trapeze. I wouldn't like that because I'm a little bit afraid of heights. If you go on a flying trapeze, said his mother, I will be a tightrope walker and I will walk across the air to you. Oh, they're very brave bunnies. I like the umbrella. That that really helps. I, th I think that helps with balance when you're a tightrope walker. Look mm. how high up they are, isn't that it? That's a really neat perspective, that picture. It's like the picture is drawn from way up high. You can see the little things down low. And the clown is watching and so is the monkey. Mm -hmm. If you become a tightrope walker and walk across the air, said the bunny, I will become a little boy and run into a house. If you become a little boy and run into a house, said the mother bunny, I will become your mother and catch you in my arms and hug you. Hmm. That's a cozy looking picture, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and that picture reminds me of a picture in another book. Hmm. A good night moon book. Shucks! said the bunny. I might just as well stay where I am and be your little bunny. And so he did. Have a carrot, said the mother bunny. And there they are, cozy in their little and home. Together. And together and safe together. So all of those ideas that that little bunny had about running away, about getting away, about escaping. And the mother bunny just kept telling him, if you do that, I'll find a way to be near you and to help you find your way home. Kind of like the shepherd in our story. And like you exactly. were saying, God does for us too. He wants us to be with him, so he finds a way to bring us back to him. Father, I have a kind of a fun craft to do. Do you want to see it? Yes, I do. Okay. That was a great story. So. Well, did you like that story? I did, yes. I'm glad you liked it. And I um, I felt very safe with that mother bunny. I mm -hmm. really did, except on the tightrope. But apart from that, I felt very safe with that mother bunny. So here's the cool craft I have for you today. Can you see it? I've already done some of it. Can you see that cool craft? No, I can't no, see anything. No, you can't because it's a tricky craft. Oh. So, Father, just like... 
the sheep in your sto- in the story that you read to us earlier, um, that sheep wandered away from the shepherds and that sheep got lost, right? So you can probably see what I'm doing here, Father. I took a white, I have a white crayon. It's a white crayon. I never really could tell what white crayons were for, unless you were using navy blue or black paper. White crayons never showed up, right? Till I learned this cool. It's a white lamb, I guess. Because this is a white lamb. So Mm. I'm drawing a white lamb on a white piece of paper here. Okay. Now, right now, can you see that little lamb, Father? Just barely. Just Just barely. Barely. I don't know if, if any of our friends in their classrooms can see this little lamb. I'll bet you can't, because right now, this little lamb is kind of lost. So here's Mm. what we're gonna do. We are going to find the little lamb. So I have a cup of water here in my magic basket with all kinds, all the things that I need to do our craft. I have a cup of water and I have some paints here, some colorful paints. Now this craft works best if I use dark colors of paint. So I'm gonna use my darkest blue watercolor paint here. And what I'm going to do is take that watercolor paint and I'm going to paint all over oh boy. this piece of that paper. That looks like fun. It does look like, you could try it. Do you want to try it, Father? Well, you can try it. Well, no, there you I'm go. not a very good artist. Well, you know what, Father? I'll bet you're a great artist. And this is going to be, anybody can do this, even Father John. Hmm. So I can go here. Yep, you just could just go like that. And That's then do right. I have to go in the lines? You don't have to go in the lines. Oh. You don't have to do and look how cool oh, this is. Good. You guys are gonna get so excited when you see this because where father is painting over the crate, you kind of need a lot of water on it too. Oh yeah, okay. Where yeah. father is painting, where the white crayon was, the paint doesn't stick to the paper there. The paper the paint only sticks to the paper where there is no wax from the crayons because the crayons, oh I see something's appearing the paint doesn't like the crayon it stays away from where the crayon is and it only likes the paper so I feel like a real artist Father John's really into this now he's loving this now and oh, you're gonna love this too so hopefully your teacher will let you do a craft like this at some point today or in the next couple of days so you can do this too and what do you just think? I think you're just about finished there father I think Gee, well you know I what you're the so artist fast. you know when you're finished what do you think well, I can see the lamb now. I think Father okay. is like our shepherd who found a little lamb for us. Now, you I don't like know if it? you can see that on those cameras. I don't know. Are we able to zoom in on our little lamb? Can you see him? He appeared, or maybe it's a she. I don't know. He or she appeared because this little lamb was lost, right, Father? We mm-hmm. couldn't see where the lamb was at all. And then father was like our shepherd and he helped this little lamb to be found again. And, and then, look at the, the lamb has a very happy face. Well, but because he's been found, you'd have yeah. a happy face too. And father, you know what? I wrote a little message on that paper too. And the message says, what does it say? God forgives. God that's, forgives. That's there a great go. message. So there's our little message. And I really hope you guys get to do a picture like this too. And if you do, Will you do us a favor? Will you ask your teacher if they will take pictures of your artwork and send it to us? Because we'd love to see them. And please, yeah, please I know send you love pictures. to see Father John's artwork too. I'm so excited. Yeah, he's I'm getting pretty proud of craft. that. So. You should be proud of that, mm-hmm. Father. You absolutely should be proud of that. <laughs> All right. Our time is just about up with our friends today, Father. What, what do you want to do now? Well, I think we should. Uh, do a little prayer share. I think so too. I think it's time for prayer share. Well, we always have time for a prayer. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So I want you to all think about something you want to pray about today. And uh, it could be a person or it could be for yourself or for your family or maybe a special need, something special that you want to uh, pray for, maybe a grandfather, grandmother. And uh, to close your eyes and think about that person. And we're going to offer a special prayer today for all those in our uh, Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario Schools, all of you in your classrooms who are offering their prayers right now. We're going to ask God to hear those prayers and to, um, so that, uh, and ask God to remember them and to uh, ask Jesus to, to hear them 
and answer them, and also to protect all of us and keep us safe and uh, keep us in your love so that we, we may never be lost, but always uh, feel that we belong and that we are looked after well. So we'll say this prayer. If you can see it there, glory be to the Father and to, to the, the Son, Son and, and to, to the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it, it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and ever, ever shall, shall be, be world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. So before we say the, the Our Father, let's put our hands together and let us pray for anyone who is sad or hurting or feeling unwelcome and send our kindness and most loving thoughts into the world. Our Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you for your prayers today. And so our world is in need of peace these days. We need to remember peace. We need to think about it and uh, develop it in our own hearts and in with one another. And so in order to show peace to one another, let us look at our neighbors, those beside us. I hear Kate's here, and we're going to offer a sign of peace, which can just be as simple as this, or this, or this. Oh, that's a good one, yeah, Father. Sure. Could you do this one? Yeah. Very nice. Peace be with you, Peace Kate. be with you, Father. And peace be with all of our friends in their classrooms today, too. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everybody. So we're going to have our final blessing now and our closing song. So if you can see the final blessing, I would like you to say it with me in your classrooms. And, uh, it's, uh, and we'll begin now. God, God we, we love, love you. you. We, we know, know you, you love, love us. us. Christ beside me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Amen. Well, Father, that was so nice to be here together, wasn't it? it were you, was. I'm sorry, you were going to give everybody their final blessing and I blew it. I interrupted. That's okay. Again. We're going to give the final blessing okay. and then we're going to sing one of the best songs ever which is joy, joy, joy. But first I'm gonna give you a blessing. So please close your eyes and ask for, pray for God's blessing today. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon all the children who are with us today in Breakfast with God. And we thank them for joining us. And we ask you to bless them in a special way today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us now sing our song, Joy, Joy, Joy. Amen. Thanks, Father. I'm sorry I interrupted you earlier. I was so excited about the song because being with all of our friends today in their classrooms and, and those, are, those, of us, um, are those of our friends who are at home today too just made me feel so joyful that I wanted to get right to the song. But I'm glad we're going to sing it now. We are. And I and think our everyone lamps, knows this one too. And our little lamps will be singing it too because yep. they are so joyful, especially this one who found his way back to the flock. Thanks to Father John Fine. I have a joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I have that joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I have the love of Jesus down in my heart. Down in my heart to say. And I'm so happy. So very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. 
Thanks to all of you for joining us today on Breakfast with, Breakfast with God. And there'll be another one coming up soon. So uh, please join us again. And thank you. We won't be seeing you, friends, until after Easter. So on Easter Sunday morning, when you wake up, before you eat any chocolate or any jelly beans, remember to say, Alleluia. That's the day of celebration. Right, Father? It certainly is. Alleluia, Kate. Right. Alleluia. And we'll see you all after Easter. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.